Hey guys, welcome back to Tuva Da Vinci. I am Ricky and today we're talking about water filters and why you should get one. So my wife and I are expecting our first son and we are really, really excited and nervous and anxious and we've made it a goal to get all these projects done that we wanted to do before our baby was born. So one of them was adding a new water filter for our house. So my wife started to get a really keen sense of taste and smell. And one of the things she complained about was the taste in our water. And so I decided, well, we should probably start doing some research and looking into what kind of a water filter we want to get. There's a ton of options out there. And I did a lot of legwork and a lot of research. And I thought I'd share that information with you. So part of the reason why we're doing this is because if you remember the news from last year about Flint, Michigan and the lead in the water and that whole fiasco, it was so heartbreaking and so close to home because if you can't trust the water that you're drinking out of the faucet in your house. I mean, that kind of that kind of does something to you. There are certain things in life that come with some risk, like driving a car, for example. You're driving in a metal box at 80 miles an hour on the freeway with other drivers that are distracted, and you understand that when you get in your car and you start it up, that there's a certain level of risk involved. But people don't think of risk when they think about drinking their water from their tap. And of course, people go out and buy bottled water and there's all kinds of things, but bottled water has its own problems too. All those bottles of water end up somewhere and that plastic's not gonna decompose. And it's expensive too. And bottled water, don't fall for all the advertising, is just tap water that's been filtered. So why not filter your own water, save some money, and have that peace of mind of knowing that whatever might happen outside from water source to your house, that you have control to be able to add some safeguards and safety measures to make sure that the water you and your family are consuming is safe. And as a new father, that was really, really paramount to me. All right, so let's get right into it. There are two categories of water filters. There are installed water filters, things that are whole house, things that are fixtures to the house and permanent. So clearly that would be for homeowners and not for renters. So if you're a renter, you'd wanna go with alternative two which would be the countertop filters or the under counter filters that you can install. And when it's time to move, you just pack it up and you take it with you wherever you go. So depending on your situation, one of these two might be a better fit for you. But even inside of these two categories, there's a lot of differences and there's a lot of options out there. So let's get right into the whole house water filters. So the first type is a water softener. And this was really popular back in the 80s and 90s. But for whatever reason, they've kind of fallen out of fashion. I think it's because they're kind of cumbersome. They require big, heavy bags of salt to be changed. They waste water, they have to be plugged in, they have electronics that can fail, and there's quite a bit of maintenance involved. And so if you've got any kind of issues, you can't really troubleshoot it yourself. There's enough going on with the, with the mechanics and electronics that you'd have to call in a professional. And that adds to the cost, and that's something you should keep in mind. Now, the way these work is, there's an ion exchange happening in a media tank, which has resin beads that are able to capture the different particulates. So basically like your calcium from your limestone and magnesium, things like that. And it captures it. So once the beads have been fully saturated and there's no more particulate to capture, then the timer comes on and says to filter that out and flush it with the brine solution, the salt water solution. And when that finishes, it reverses the process and you've got clean beads again, ready to get back to work. Again, you've got these two tanks, and if space and storage are a concern for you, then that's something to keep in mind. For us, the main strike against this solution was the fact that it would take up more space in our garage. All right, so the second type of whole house water filter would be a three-stage, they call them big blue filters, right? These, you've probably seen these. So these come in two sizes. There's like the 10-inch filters and there's 20-inch filters, and there might be other sizes in between. But the idea here is you've got either one, two, or three stages, three being the most advanced and the most performance oriented. And what they do is they capture different types of particulate and different types of stuff in your water at different stages. So the very first is a sediment filter and that'll capture the calcium and iron and things like that. The same kind of stuff the water softener would have captured in the first stage. Now the second stage will be the specialty filter. So there's different vendors with different types, but the cool thing about the big blue filters is that they're standard. There are tons of different companies that make the filtration systems, but because they're standardized, the filters themselves you can buy from anywhere. So even if you buy a filter from one company and they go out of business or you don't like them, you can buy the filters from somewhere else and they'll all work because they're again, they're very standard. For example, the big blue filter that we were looking at had a activated alumina filter. And I'd never heard of this before, but basically it removed a lot of cool stuff, fluoride and some of the other chloramides. And the last stage would be the activated carbon. The activated carbon is the most common water filter. Your Brita water filter you're thinking of in, when you were in college, 
those had activated carbon. They can get rid of chlorine and some bacteria and other things like that. And it, it helps with the taste of the water, uh, especially. So that would be the three stage whole house filter. Now, both of those first two types need professional installation. They require a little bit of work. Now, stay tuned for part two of this video series where I actually installed a whole house filter myself. So I actually soldered my first copper pipes and I, and I got the blow torches and I did all that stuff. And it was pretty fun actually. And it was a pretty good lesson to learn because if you ever spring a leak, or if you ever have any issues in the future or you're doing some light remodeling and you just need to move a pipe location over a little bit, it's not hard. It's something you can learn to do and it's always a good skill to have. So stay tuned for that. Now let's switch gears over to the second type. Now this might be more applicable to you if you live in an apartment or you're renting because these aren't permanent and they don't really require installation so much. So the first type would be a gravity feed type. So the best example I can think of for this is a Berkey. I'll have a link in the description, but these Berkeys are great. There's a couple of different models, but most of them are stainless steel. They'll last a long time. They're built really well. And the way they work is basically that you pour water into the top reservoir and it'll go through these filters. And again, you can buy different types, kind of like that three stage filter. You can get different types of filters for your needs. So I think they have a fluoride removal filter and they have other, all kinds of other stuff. But based on how many filters you have, the water will trickle down just like in a Brita and it'll collect in the bottom reservoir and that's where your water is. Now the pros here is there's no power. It doesn't need even water pressure. If something crazy happened and you don't have water coming into your house, you can just get water from anywhere, pour it through this system and get clean water out of it. So it's really, kind of a weapon of choice for preppers and people who believe in being prepared for the unpreparable. So that's a good option there. But the biggest issue with the Berkey is the flow rate. It actually takes a long time to filter water. So it's not really on demand. So you'd have to kind of do some prep work. So if you're out of water, you have to pour some in and wait for it to come through. And that, that could be something that might or might not bother you, but that's something to keep in mind for your, for your decision making. Now there's a whole bunch of other gravity feed type. Pure and Brita make the pitcher types, and there's a couple of different options out there. And they all work pretty similarly, but they are gonna be limited in that most of them are carbon filters, so the amount of things that they can filter out are limited. So in the back, it'll tell you what it'll take care of. And if that is good for you, then, then that might be a good solution for you. So the second type of countertop filter is a water distiller and these are electrical they got to be plugged in so the water gets heated up and evaporated and that evaporated water is collected and the idea is all the bad stuff stays behind and it's true they actually do work really well i've actually played with one of these and when you get to the very end when you have a little bit of water left if you look at it it's absolutely disgusting and that's all that dissolved solids and all the other stuff that's been in your water that you don't really need so these systems are pretty cool because distilled water is really really pure if you got a tds a total dissolved solid meter which we'll do in part three we'll do some testing and measured it you'd see that it'd be close to zero it's like almost pure water but not exactly any gases that evaporate before the boiling point of water will actually also be collected with it it's being evaporated just along with the water everything else will stay behind but some of these systems are pretty smart what they do is they actually run the system for a while and for five or ten minutes they'll just take the evaporated air steam mixture and just blow it out and then after a couple of minutes figuring if there's any kind of gases in there that might be bad let's let them all leave and then we'll close it and collect the pure water after that. They do work pretty well, um, but the downfall here is the electric cost. So some of these systems can run on around 800 to 1000 watts when they're on to boil water. Heating water is really expensive. It takes a lot of energy to do that and that's because the latent heat of vaporization of water is very high. And also they take a very long time. They might take five to eight hours to get like a pitcher or a, a liter or a cup or whatever of water based on your system. So if you're running 800 to 1000 watts for five to eight hours, that can easily be three, four, five kilowatts, which is a, a lot of energy. To put in context, a big screen TV runs on about 150 watts and a big gaming computer or a video editing computer might run on three to 400. So it's a lot of power. And also the flow rate is also a problem here. And it's actually much worse than the Berkey because it takes five to eight hours to get water out of it, which means that you have to plan ahead and run this thing every night and make sure you do it because otherwise you're not gonna have water. And that's the problem. And that's the reason why we didn't wanna go with this system is because we aren't that responsible or organized and we're gonna forget. And one of these mornings we're gonna wake up without water and that would just be a bummer. And that's the last thing we need is more pressure, more stress and, and more time added to our nightly routine, right? But if that works for you, it's a good option. Now the final kind is the most popular by far right now and it's because it works really really well and they're called reverse osmosis systems and they're actually very similar to the three-stage filter that we had talked about previously except 
It's much smaller filters, but they have the same kind of approach. The first stage will be a sediment filter to collect all the calcium and magnesium and hard, heavy metals like that. And then the second stage is a reverse osmosis membrane. And what it basically is, is think of like a film with very, very, very tiny holes. And the holes are so tiny that only pure water can get through it and nothing else. All the other impurities stay behind. But the problem with this is the holes are so tiny that it causes a lot of back pressure and it causes the system to actually have to discharge water to be able to cope with that back pressure. And so what this will do is it'll run water into a tank reservoir that, that is usually housed under your kitchen cabinet, for example, and that is filled. And when it's empty, there's no back pressure in the tank. And so the water waste is usually like two or three to one. So to make one gallon of water, you have to waste two or three gallons, which is a lot. But what's a much more common scenario with RO, and this is kind of the dark black secret of RO that no one really talks about, is the most common use case would be you have a full tank and you walk over to the spigot and you get just a cup of water. So if you get a cup of water, the tank is almost full and it has a lot of pressure in it. So the back pressure in the tank is going to be high. And so that waste rate goes from two or three to one. It can go from like five to eight, nine, ten to one. So that last one cup, for that tank to fill that one cup back up again, it can waste probably five to eight cups of water to create that one cup. And that is staggering to me, and that was the part that always turned me off. But you can't argue with the results. The RO water is fantastic. It's really, really good. It's one of the most safest, surefire ways of getting really, really clean water. And again, if you take a TDS meter to RO water, it's gonna read zero or one or two and it's gonna be really, really pure water. In fact, sometimes it's so pure that people actually add minerals back to it because the taste of such pure water is a little bit unknown to us. We never really drink water in such a pure state. And one little tip you can do to save some of that water waste, if that bothers you, is normally when you install these systems, there's a discharge hose and you hook it up to your drain in your kitchen sink and that's where the water just drains out of. But if you can take that hose and somehow run it outside or through a window or or through a wall or to a bucket or something. Not to a bucket because that bucket will be full so fast you'll be spilling water everywhere. The water is not bad or anything, it just has a slightly higher concentration of impurities, but it's fine. And that water you can use to water your plants and feel better about it because you can just take some of that water you're wasting instead, just call that your water, plant watering, water. Does that make sense? All right, well, there you have it. There is a rundown of all the different types that we had looked into. Now, admittedly, there's a lot more options out there, I'm sure, but these are the ones that are really popular now and pretty commonly used and the ones that we looked into. And so for us to make our decision, the main factors were price, right? We didn't want to spend too much money. There are some whole house systems that are five, $6,000 and that, that wasn't for us. The second thing is maintenance. We didn't want to have a system that we had to clean out or do work to every week or two or three. We wanted something that we could just set and forget for some long period of time. Ideally like a year. I think a year is the right amount of time for me to be not too bothered to have to go and sort it out or do some maintenance or clean it up or change a filter. But every two, three months is just too often. We're, we're going to forget. We're going to lose track of it. And so that was that was important to us. The third thing is obviously is performance and how well it does and how many impurities and how many bad things it can get out of your water. And the fourth thing was just size and, and convenience, right? So for us, we use a little water cooler because that has a hot and cold water spigot on it. And we just love that because if we're having tea or something, we can just use the hot water. And for the most part, I use the cold water. If we got a Berkey, that would be really problematic because now we have one big container barrel drum that we have to fill up. And then from that, you have to fill up a five gallon drum and then put that into the unit. And it would just take up so much room. And But if you don't use that, if you use water right from the sink or from the fridge, your needs might be different. But there you have it. That was kind of what we looked at, guys. Um, thank you for joining us here. This is really important. The quality of the water that your family is drinking is of the paramount importance. And as part of the 2-Bit Da Vinci community, we want you guys to be informed. We want you guys to be thinking about new ideas and new things. And if you guys have ideas, if you guys have thoughts or anything else, please post them below. We'd love to hear from you, answer your questions or take your feedback. If there's more systems you want us to uh, review, let us know, we can easily do that. And again, like I mentioned before, this is gonna be one of three videos. The second one we're gonna do is gonna be how to install a filter system. And I think you're gonna like that a lot, especially if you have that DIY nature in you and you wanna save a thousand bucks. I got a quote to get my unit installed and a plumber was quoting me a thousand dollars. And then part three of our video is gonna cover the performance of our filters and how it did. We went out on Amazon and got two water test kits and we're gonna check the water that comes into the house 
through the filter and the water that goes to the irrigation system outside for the plants, which isn't filtered. And we're gonna compare the two and we'll see how it goes. So we're gonna have links to the next two videos. We hope you guys jump right in and watch them, whatever pertains to you. If you're not interested in installing one, go to the third one. Maybe we'll give you ideas of how you can test your water. And as always, we have links to all the products we've mentioned in our description. Check them out. If any of this stuff appeals to you or you're more interested, follow the link. You can help support us and keep the good content coming, guys. Thank you for joining our community. We hope you guys keep coming and keep tuning in and your support means the world to us. So thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.